And welcome back to the Target Gender Equality Live event. We have had such a busy morning so far and ready to keep the momentum and inspiration going. I would also like to give a warm welcome to those joining us on UN Web TV uh, from all over the world. Uh, registration for the rest of the event is open on the hoping page, remember that. And you can follow along on social media as well as using our hashtag target gender equality. Now, it's my great pleasure to welcome the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Gutierrez, for his remarks on the UN's commitment to gender equality and SDG5. Excellencies, business leaders, dear friends, it is a pleasure to greet you at Target Gender Equality Live. Today's event builds on more than a decade of hard work to achieve gender equality in the business world. The UN Global Compact and the UN Women launched the Women's Empowerment Principles in 2010 to advance women's leadership in the workplace, the marketplace and the community. Translating those principles from business commitment into concrete, measurable business practice is the goal of target gender equality. Hundreds of companies across every region are participating in this initiative. I hope thousands more will join. We must all act urgently because the COVID-19 pandemic poses a dire threat. The social and economic impacts of the crisis are affecting women worst of all. Backtracking on the path to gender equality is not just bad for women, it will undermine the resilience of entire economies and societies. And it will prevent the world from fulfilling the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Gender equality is essentially a question of power. We live in a male-dominated world with a male-dominated culture, and this is true of the public and private sector alike. For the private sector, women's equal participation and leadership is both a moral duty and a business imperative. When women have income and resources, including access to digital technology, they are more likely to invest in ways that benefit their families and communities. Experience also shows that businesses with women well represented on their corporate boards are more stable and profitable. The world needs the talents and perspectives of all women to solve our biggest challenges, from rebuilding the global economy to fighting systemic racism to tackling climate change. That is why gender equality is a strategic priority for the UN Global Compact and for the UN system itself. Gender equality means business. Let us unite to make it a reality. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary General, for those remarks and for being a champion for women and girls all around the world. Today's event showcases the work of the Target Gender Equality GLOVE initiative, which works to support companies in setting and reaching ambitious corporate targets for women's representation and leadership. In the past year, through the UN Global Compact Target Gender Equality Initiative, the program supported over 300 companies from large multinationals to small and medium enterprises to set and meet ambitious targets for women's representation and leadership. The initiative has been implemented by Global Compact Local Networks in 19 countries across the region. This year, the UN Global Compact is more than doubling the geographic scale with target gender equality being offered in 45 countries, and we are excited to share that registration for the second round of the program is now open today. Head to the booth for more information. To share more about the program, we would like to play a short video featuring companies, networks, and leaders from around the world. Let's take a look at them. As the Secretary General has said, gender equality is the greatest human rights challenge of our time. At home, in the economy, in society, women lack equal opportunities and access 
to economic participation, to health, to finance, to skills and networks, and to technology. When women are included in decision-making roles, organizations perform better, including in terms of environmental, social, and governance indicators. Research shows us that companies still have a long way to go when it comes to equity in leadership. The proportion of women in senior management globally has remained at only 29%, while 47% at the entry level. More and more today, companies understand that focusing on gender equity and women's advancement will help them succeed financially and in attracting and retaining the best talent. UN Global Compact launched Target Gender Equality to flip the conversation and deliver the outcome we want to see, equality between women and men. Target gender equality helps companies move from commitment to action. The program guides companies to set ambitious targets, starting with women's representation and leadership in business, and it provides them with the knowledge, the network, and the practical business examples that they need to achieve those goals. Through performance analysis, capacity building, and peer-to-peer -peer learning, participating companies can identify the policies and the processes and the interventions that are really needed to create equal opportunities for women and men in the workplace. This goes from tackling the gender pay gap, addressing unconscious bias in hiring practices, all the way to rethinking how employers can support women and men as caregivers. We joined Target Gender Equality because we wanted to learn from others, share our experiences and explore ideas that would help us to develop a plan to improve equal representation in our business. Through this program, we have learned a number of things, but one thing I would like to highlight here is the significance of diversity and inclusion in the workplace and how it actually helps to bring about harmony and fair treatment for all. We believe that a diverse and inclusive environment are fundamental for economic and social growth. Through the program, we have strengthened our diversity and inclusion committees in our uh, regions and we continue reinforcing current practices and identify areas in which we can most further innovate to strengthen gender equality. As a result of the inspiration that we've gained and the learnings we've picked up from other organizations while sharing our learnings, uh, we've created a very strong plan over the next few years to move Unilever Sri Lanka to a gender balanced organization where we have 50% men and women. Throughout the program, we've learned that setting targets is key to realizing ambitions. What gets measured gets managed. So by setting ambitious goals, we're able to track the improvements we make over time. One of the most important features of the Target Gender Equality Program is that it is delivered at the country level by global compact local networks. This means that the conversations are contextualized. We can focus in on the challenges that are most pressing to companies in our country while still offering access to global learning and engagement opportunities. In Brazil, the PG is running in partnership with UN Women. And since the day one, we are planning all activities, company engagement together. And in Spain, we are working closely with the Women's Institute from the Spanish government and the COE, Spanish Confederation of Business Organization, both with the Gender Equality Global Coalition. We are proud as a result of our participation in this program, we have actually embarked in the process of setting some practicable targets and chalk out key actionable items. We are in a decade of action. There's absolutely no time to waste. We must act quickly and act intentionally to target gender equality. Equidade é prioridade. Meta, igualdade de gênero. Thank you so much. Now we turn to the business leaders in the Target Gender Equality Program to hear their motivations for joining the program, what they have learned and what they hope to achieve. Recuerde que hay traducción al español. Lembrese que estamos una traducción a portugués. 
To lead on this discussion, I will pass over to Anne Kearns, the Executive Vice Chair of MasterCard and globally recognized gender champion. Anne is a global chair of the 30% Club, a UK-based organization that campaigns for more women at all levels of global business and a leading voice for women in business. Over to you, Anne. Thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be here with you today with an absolutely fantastic panel from Indonesia, from Turkey, and from Chile um, to talk together as business leaders about target gender equality. Uh, we could have no better opening than Antonio Gutierrez telling us that it was both a moral duty and a business imperative that we achieve this. Um, so, uh, I would like to introduce our panel for the discussion. Um, first of all, um, I'll start with May. May is from Indonesia and she is the CEO of the biggest premium supermarket in Indonesia. Um, the group is called Superboga Lestari and uh, May is an author and she is also very, very passionate about sustainability. Um, moving on to Alejandro. Alejandro is from Chile. He is the general manager of the bank, Kaya Los Heroes, and, um, and is a great gender champion in his own country. Um, and then finally, uh, going to Turkey, we've got Feite um, from a company called AXA Acrylic in the textile industry. Feite started life as a computer engineer and is now actually head of HR, so quite a career change for him in this industry. Um, so fantastic panel, very interesting people from all parts of the world. And May, I'm going to start with you and ask you why are women a priority for your company and how are you thinking about target gender equality? I think I would like to start with my own uh, personal experience. When I started my career back in 1988, I was lucky enough to join a biggest uh, multinational companies that uh, promote gender equality. However, back then, um, there are still lack of uh, lack of respect on gender equality and um, there is some um, job stereotyping 30 years so passed and uh, now i'm leading the leading premium supermarket uh, in indonesia we promote uh, gender equality and we promote also that um, uh, women and girls if they are given an equal chance then the company will be able to succeed. And I would like to quote also what uh, Lauren Gula uh, uh, written in one of uh, her article that empowering women and girls helps expand economic growth, promote social development, and establish more stable and just societies. <clears throat> Women's economic empowerment benefits not only women, but also children and societies at large. That's why I am very uh, keen to keep on promoting gender equality, not only because I'm a woman, but I think that will benefit to societies at large. Thank you. Thank you so much, May. And I, I think that idea that it does benefit society at large is a key issue here. Um, and also the idea that it benefits the economy and the wider society. Um, really good reasons to be focusing on it. So, um, Feite, what about um, what about from you in, in in Turkey? How do you think about this question of, you know, women in your business? How do you treat them as a priority? Um, how do you see um, the balance between men and women developing? Okay, thank you very much, Anne. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks for your invitation and salute all all distinguished guests. I hope that this conversation will make a significant configuration to our target to advancing women's representation and leadership in business and social life. 
Let me express that we attach a great value and meaning to the target gender equality program, which was launched last year. Our motivation for joining this program was to make towards the realistic targets to advance women's leadership at all levels and to invite anyone to take actions for furthering those targets. Throughout its history of almost 50 years, our corporation has always, always believed in the power of women. We remain convinced that we will be able to achieve our goals of social progress thanks to the creativity, unrelenting resolution, and endless perseverance of women. In our uh, woman modern world, uh, women's rights con constitute fundamental human rights which are relevant to all and need to be addressed urgently. At Axacrylic, we address this matter with this perspective. Axacrylic is a signatory company to the United Nations Global Compact more than 15 years. In that respect, we aim to support sustainable social development by increasing women's employment in our company. Currently, women make up a significant part of the board of directors. Women's empowerment to assume active roles and act as decision makers in business life is critical not only for my company, but also for the future of Turkey. Thank you. I love your comment. I love your comment that women's rights are human rights. And also your reference to the creativity of women. I've been in Istanbul many times on business, and I can uh, I can vouch for the fact that I've met many senior women business leaders in Turkey, and they are very creative, as are the men, of course. <laughs> um, going over to you, um, Alejandro, um, from, from Chile, um, how is your bank thinking about um, women inside the bank and also women as part of society? in terms of gender equality. You may be on mute, perhaps. Alejandro, perhaps you're on mute. Could you just try? Could the sound engineer talk to me? Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello. can we bring Alejandro off mute? No. Uh, okay. I can, can you hear me? Oh, yes, good. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? I think, yes, we can, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, See? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our company is part of the social security service in Chile. We have a relevant role in the country which was again evident during the pandemic because we are the most complete social safety network in the country. And our purpose is to work for excluded people. In this context, our experience has, has led us to understand the barriers and inequities between men and women. And we believe that we can contribute to their decrease and generate an impact in the country's labor market. We incorporate change in this matter as a central topic in our company to formally develop an inclusive organizational structure with enhanced development, conciliation, and co-responsibility between men and women. This is why we provide professional opportunities to be women that are in our organization considering their dual role. We have seen the impact of the failed crisis of gender inequalities. In our country, gender inequality indicators in the economic matters has gone back a decade. Women's labor participation fell more than 45 during the pandemic. For this reason, we want to promote in our related companies policies of non-discrimination and equal treatment. Joining the DGA was key to promote the actions we have already been taking, knowing new tools that allow to advance gender equality and female leaderships in our organization and in our affiliated companies. Thank you. That's very interesting because you've raised a very important point about the step backwards during the pandemic. And um, it brings me on to the topic of things that we can do now to address this and, and perhaps move forward in the future. 
And it's things like setting new targets in our company and trying to achieve stronger results as we recover from COVID. I know in my own company, MasterCard, last year, we published our gender pay gap, which was 8% on a global basis. And that includes everywhere in the world, all 200 countries that we operate in. And this year, we are actually linking that gender pay gap to executive pay. So we hope the executives then drive down that pay gap. And that's something that we've set for ourselves this year. So I'd like to ask all of you to tell me ideas that you've got inside your companies for how you're addressing targets to reach gender equality and what kind of results you've achieved. May, should I start with you? Yep. Um, I think um, first and foremost, um, within our company, 66% of the board members are women. And um, the, uh, we have within our store operations, 50% of the district managers are also women. What we are trying to do now is to also empower more uh, female uh, leadership in the store management and uh, level below. Because I think um, still uh, the, uh, on the middle or uh, lower class people, the belief that the woman stays at home is still stronger compared with the upper class uh, people. So we are recruiting more uh, female graduates in our MDP programs so that they become the uh, future leaders. And we are also working closely with the uh, women uh, SMEs to promote uh, women entrepreneurs and also working with the uh, women uh, that helps uh, children with disabled, disabled uh, children. We uh, work with them to buy their um, uh, products. So uh, in overall, we said that um, promoting female entrepreneurship will help uh, uh, prospering the uh, societies. And not only that, we are also advancing uh, maternity uh, leaves and also uh, promoting a better working environment for single mothers and uh, female breadwinners. Uh, make them feel more comfortable, make them feel uh, that uh, we apply a more uh, flexi hours so that they can take care of the families as well as work. That's what we are doing within our company. And that's um, another important thing that we always um, uh, do is to um, promote a global compact because they are the one that uh, keep on emphasizing the importance of gender equality. <laughs> Thank you very much, May. And I mean, it's, it's interesting because obviously you are in an industry where there are a lot of women. I mean, 66% on your board, 40%, 50% overall. Um, and yet, you know, you're, you're saying, but now you need to focus on women rising higher up the ranks to manage stores and give them all the support around that that they actually need to be successful which is um, really good to hear. I know that you um, actually uh, work with Global Compact in your country and are a great champion of it as well. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'll move to Alejandro now. Um, what, you know, what is going on in uh, Kaya Los Heroes about the different targets you're setting for yourself and the way you're trying to change things? With the commitment of the board and executives, we developed a policy of gender equality and implemented a management system that allowed us to be the first company in the financial industry to obtain certification in the Chilean standard of gender equality, reconciliation and co-responsibility promoted by the Ministry of Women and Gender Equity of the Government of Chile. The management system allowed us to advance and ensure the results in gender equality and reconciliation in all the process of the company. In Los Héroes, we seek to promote equal opportunities, and to achieve this, we incorporate the gender approach into human resource procedures. We move forward in increasing the participation of women in leadership positions, and already had an equal executive board. We were able to promote almost 60% of women in the past year, and 55 of the new income was occupied by women. We enrich our culture. We incorporate inclusive language into all our communication. 
we have a specific training. We create flexible work arrangement to promote the reconciliation at work, family, and personal life. We have, um, we have reporting channels and procedures aimed to preventing work and sexual harassment. And we incorporate a procedure for prevention, detection, and support in situation of domestic violence. Chile's Minister of Women and Gender Equity awarded us a distinction for achievement the certification in Chile gender equality standard, while REDMAT, a Chilean organization that promotes female de leaderships, recognized us for our equal strategy and specifically for our efforts to provide opportunities of professional development to women. Thank you. You know, I think um, this, uh, this area that you've raised, Alejandro, about um, helping the people that are subject to domestic violence is a very important thing. Clearly, your organization is going beyond the boundaries of what's happening inside your own business to think of your employees in terms of them, their whole selves and the life that they have at home as well as at work, for which I very much applaud you. I love the idea that you talk about inclusive language and flexibility as, as May did as well. Um, and, um, and yeah, it sounds like a fantastic program, uh, especially if you're saying you've got 50% women on your board as well. Um, so you're obviously, you know, led from the top with a very sort of balanced situation. So thank you for those thoughts. That, that was really helpful. Um, and Fete, moving, moving to you now, um, you know, you've actually been in many industries and I'm sure you're going to start talking about uh, AXA uh, Acrylic, but you're the HR head there and therefore responsible for many of the people policies uh, what have you thought about and done in the last few years that you think um, has really pushed the cause of uh, gender equality? Thank you. Uh, scientific research proves that the presentation of women by minimum 30 percent makes positive contribution to the decision-making quality of boards of directors. Our company for this reason is a member of 30 percent club, which aims at least 30% presentation on women in boards of directors of company publicly traded in St Borsa Istanbul by coming four years. Hence, 30% representation of women reflects our priority target in that regard. Currently, four out of nine directors are women in the board of AXA Acrylic, approximately 50%. This means that we have gone far beyond this target. Another target of our company is to promote the principle of women's empowerment in active position and creating equal opportunity to women at all levels uh, to ensure our sustainable development goals. In order to attain these goals, we joined the Target Gender Equality Program, which has guided our efforts to create policies to promote women's active and efficient engagement in decision-making process in economic life and offer better opportunities for leadership. This, uh, this is among our targets to increase the number of women employees and managers. Last but not least, we are quite honored by awarded for our efforts to reach an inclusive and equitable future. Having received gender equality model certificate from the Women Entrepreneurs Association of Turkey, Accycling has also recognized as a board empowered by women during the eighth Women's Director Conference organized by Sabancı University Corporate Governance Forum last year. Thank you. I'm delighted to hear that you're a member of the 30% Club. <laughs> I checked that up before we came on the program, actually, because I'm the global chair, as you know, and very friendly with Melsa Arat, who is, uh, runs the 30% Club there in Turkey. And, um, and it's great to see that you're already heading towards 50% or you're at 50% um, for, of women on your board. Um, I know that um, two, you know, two of you have actually talked about women entrepreneurs, uh, me and you, and um, we think this is a very important area in MasterCard too. Um, we 
we set ourselves a target of reaching 50 million more SMEs around the world uh, in the next five years and bringing them into the financial and the digital system. And we had a discussion about whether we should just um, not choose whether they were men or women and just you know, reach our target. But actually we sat back from that and we said we would like at least half these SMEs to be women led. So we have a, a target of 25 million women led companies that we're trying to support and bring into the financial system in the next five years. And I think uh, we're getting the results of the first year ne in next week. And I'm pretty sure we're on track to hit that 25 million. So, um, so that's really nice that we're all thinking of these areas together. Um, now, I want to move on to what you all think about the challenges and the barriers that we have to remove in the future. Alejandro, I'll start with you this time. What, what, what are you thinking about the challenges and the barriers that we still have to knock down now? I think you've gone on mute again, Alejandro. Can't hear Can you. Hear you? Me? Yes. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. The role of TGE has been to show us how gender equality program benefits everyone, not just women, and that by sharing good practice, we can support the performance and sustainability to other companies. The internal challenge is to continuously improve our equity indicators to enhance our gender focused culture and this way maintain the certification in Chile gender equality standard. In relation to our purpose, we want to contribute to the reduction of gender barriers by sharing practice aimed to provide equal opportunities between women and the men in the labor field. In this line, we are working with the Inter-American Development Bank Invest and its Gender Diversity and Inclusion Department to raise awareness of these gender gaps both within Los Héroes and with our partner companies. To do this, we will have a team of collaborators. We will be trained by IDB, IDB Invest on topics such, such as co-responsibility, gender biases, non-discriminator business, practices and security health and wellness policies. Thank you. You raise a very good uh, challenge, actually, which is the whole gender bias side. And, uh, and often, often biases are unconscious. You know, we all have models about how the world works, but it is something that we see across the workplace and something that does need to be addressed. Um, it's good news to hear, hear that you're working with um, the development bank because these development banks around the world um, are really making a difference to how we address this issue, along with the work that obviously UN Global Compact's doing with uh, target gender equality. Um, so, May, what, what do you think about the future and about barriers that need to be knocked down? I think um, there are two things, but um, the first um, of all now is because of the pandemic. Um, women and girls are more susceptible to uh, unfair treatment, and um, they are also uh, more susceptible to being uh, abused. And... Um, in general, however, we think that um, there are the challenges that uh, the women are facing are two uh, factors. One is the external factors that the perception that women are the housekeepers. And this perception is stronger in the lower class and also is stronger in some areas in our countries. And secondly, it's more on the internal uh, factor of the woman itself. That is, um, they, they think and act that they should be uh, look attractive and presentable to be more socially accepted. The way I look at it is that um, if you believe that you can't change your life, it will end up as being a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I'm uh, quoting a study that was conducted by Julian Rother in 1966 that um, <clears throat> about the locus of control uh, to understand what causes our actions, then influence our behaviors and um, attitudes. And that's why we are promoting a lot of education and trainings and work with a woman that helps also the communities and the disabled children. Because through education, then people will be made uh, more 
aware of their ability and be more aware um, of their own um, uh, confidence and focusing on the locus of control that they can make the change. And I think now um, in Indonesia alone, if we go back to the 1970s, if we look at the gender parity index um, education, uh, in the 70s, it's only 0.9%. 0.9 in favor of boys. But now in the 90s, it's almost equal. University graduates also almost equal in Indonesia. However, what happens is that after they graduate from universities and they get married, then the old perceptions of being a caretaker of the home, um, of the families, prohibiting them from proceeding the careers even further which is the expectation of taking care of the family. It's not a bad expectation, but it creates an extra burden for the woman. And um, um, I also would like to uh, quote something from the Women's Learning Partnership that estimates that worldwide for every year beyond fourth grade that girls attend school, wages rise 20%, child deaths drop, 10% and size, family size drops 20%. Therefore, we have to empower women. First and foremost is to believe on themselves and promoting educations, not necessarily formal educations, but also education in believing themselves that God has created us, men and women, and people in general to be unique, to complement and support each other. And also, the other objective of gender equality is not to conquer uh, because we are aiming not to be female dominance, but we are aiming to live in harmony, men and women. And therefore, in our recruitment program, it's not exclusive to female or uh, male, but it's inclusive and we open equal opportunities for male and women because the uh, ultimate objective is to create the balance of uh, presence so that we can complement each other. And that will create a healthier family environment and healthier society at large. Thank you. Thank you very much, May. I, I totally agree with you. Education is really important, starting very much with young girls and, and young girls' perceptions of themselves. Um, I know um, in our company, we're great advocates of more women going into STEM subjects because we want to be able to have, you know, a good base to be able to recruit men and women from. And we want women to be actively involved in things like programming artificial intelligence so that we don't have the old uh, algorithms of the past defining about who we are in the future. Um, you're quite right that actually women's education has come on a long way and many countries around the world now have equal numbers of men and women graduating from university and some countries have more women than men graduating from university. Mm -hmm. But then it's very important for us to make sure that those women um, are given the chance to have a good opportunity in the career world and to be successful. And if they are, then they will earn you know, the money and close the gender pay gap. And they'll also close the pension pay gap, which is a very big pay gap because women earn less than men and they outlive men. And that becomes an issue then in old age. So many things there to address. And thank you for raising all of those topics. I thought it was very interesting. So, um, Fete, over to you in, in Turkey. What, uh, what are you thinking about um, the barriers facing really getting gender balance, gender equality? Uh, there are so many challenges to address, even though important steps has been taken, I'm sorry, has been taken globally to, to enhance women's uh, visibility and promote equal opportunity for women in business life. We are aware of the disadvantages position of women on the many other companies in terms of wages, terms of references, employees' rights, and various other social roles. I think we need to develop a far-reaching perspective to equality in order to eliminate such barriers affecting women. 
At this point, everyone must take charge of the process, both corporate and individual levels. To give an example, it's really important to avoid enforcing gender stereotype on our children. We especially encourage, encourage girls to take successful business women as their role models so that they will have the courage to assume powerful position in business and social lives. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I think this idea of role models is really important. And um, I think it's not just for women, it's for people from any minorities. If they do not see themselves, you know, being successful at the top of companies, it's very hard for them to get there. Um, so a lot of research is showing that. Um, you know, how uh, the last question, that, and we're going to that now, is really about how can we change things? How can we really raise the bar? What do, we, what do you think your companies want to do in the future? Alejandro, I'll start with you. We want to promote certification in companies in the financial field of our country. And we will communicate to our more than 10,000 affiliated companies the value of gender equality and the positive impact to the business to promote the incorporation into the initiative of gender parity in Chile. Besides, we want to have a multiplier effect. We have added to the women's empowerment principles created by Women UN and the Global Impact and the Gender Parity Initiative in Chile. This way, we invite our partner companies to do so as well because the first step to take concrete action is to establish the commitment of the company have maturement for gender gaps and establish an action plan to close them. Thank you. Great. Well, I, you know, I'm so pleased that you brought up the women empowerment principles that have been created by the UN. Um, I think these are absolutely fantastic things that if everyone adopted them around the world, they would make an incredible difference. May, what do you think, uh, what do you think about raising the bar in your company and in your country? Um, I think um, in the last uh, 10, um, probably 15 years, uh, the Indonesia has made a big progress on the uh, female participation. And we work very closely, of course, with the Global Compact to uh, know uh, more about um, how to improve the women empowerment. But um, what we would like to focus in the coming years uh, to raise the bar is to work closer with the universities so that we can um, target more university graduates and um, improve their uh, career. And also work with um, women SMEs um, that I already mentioned before and women that uh, help the disabled children because uh, we believe also that disabled children whether they are men uh, or women, uh, boys or girls, they have the opportunities to uh, contribute to the societies. And um, last and um, not least is to improve the contribution of the um, lower level uh, um, uh, people, the lower level staffs um, to be more uh, female because currently there are more male in the lower level so that we can create a balance of um, uh, work. Um, you bring up a very good point um, about disability, May, and this goes to another aspect of basically overall inclusion. And um, there are many people who are actually disabled in the workforce. And, um, and sometimes it's not even apparent to other people um that that's the case um and i think there's more and more awareness that we need to address this but there's also statistics that i have seen in britain about um there being a big disability pay gap for dis disabilities that are obvious um you know for example uh servicemen coming out of the army and so on who've lost a limb and then the impact on their ability to actually earn a living. Um, so this is a very important area in the business world, and I'm really pleased that you, you raised that. Um, Peter, what, what are you thinking about in terms of the country, your company, 
um, in terms of, you know, just raising the bar, other things we could be doing? Uh, I think that the key to the gender equality uh, is to empower women to assume a more effective and visible role in decision-making mechanism at all walks of life. As a company dedicated to gender equality, we will keep promoting this target by prior prioritizing women's employment in our company and also in our ecosystem, such as our customer, supplier, local authorities, and so on. Thank you. You know, one of the things that came through on a poll that we ran earlier uh, for Target Gender Equality Live was the area about, um, you know, removing unconscious bias. Um, I want to just throw it out to the panel. Um, have you got any ideas of things that you have done inside your companies that help that? I know that in our company, we, we try to have gender neutral recruitment. Um, you know, the words that we use when we're recruiting people, we try to take all reference to gender out of that to try and make it a level playing field. Um, does anyone have anything they, they would like to say on that? I, I think um, in our company, in terms of recruitment, is always uh, gender neutral. Um, however, I think um, there are also some uh, jobs that are more suited to men and there are some jobs that are more suited to uh, women. And that's something that we cannot um, enforce. But for example, the work that is in our distribution centers, um, I mean, it's more physical work, so it's, it's more uh, male uh, works. But in terms of education, in terms of internal training, we give equal opportunities uh, for uh, women as well as men so that um, they can also choose their career path. Um, in the future. Another thing that the, uh, thank you May, that's uh, for your answer. Another thing that came up in the poll was the idea of um, giving increasing skills training. Um, we mentioned it ourselves, role models, uh, people felt they were important. And then things like professional development opportunities. Now, this is, this is an important um, question to answer because um, I know myself in the corporate world, sometimes people look at a woman and they think, oh, she's got two children, we'll not offer her that assignment abroad because that could be hard for her or something like this. I mean, how do you, how do you think about skills development, professional opportunities, and um, where you can achieve it, role modeling. Would anyone like to, to answer that? Any of the guys, because May and I have been talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would probably say is that, uh, sorry, Alejandro, please. Uh, I would probably we want to say eliminate. Uh, yeah, Alejandro, you go you. because, yeah. Uh, go no, we were to eliminate, um, um, we were to eliminate inequalities in all the process of, of the company, uh, uh, particularly in human resource. This is a, is a, is a good measure for a uh, promote uh, equal gender. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, Feta, you're in human resources. I mean, do you have anything to say about that? Yes, of course. Uh, to, pro to, to ensure the gender equality, in fact, we have uh, development programs or educate some educations uh, provided both uh, male and woman uh, gender. We have no uh, making no differences on the development tools and uh, even uh, for the pro promotion. Uh, we, have, uh, we are not making any difference between men and women. Uh, and uh, we have also many colleagues, women colleagues from our company 
who were leaving the this company to have the, their baby and then coming back again and starting uh, from their profession uh, to the point uh, they, that, that they left. Without, That's great. I mean, that uh, idea of return to work. Any, any professional opportunities. That's great. The return to work is a, is a very important area. And I think um, many companies have return to work programs that help women um, and, and men, by the way, reassimilate. We have those in about 38 countries in our company. 15 seconds left, May. Any last words? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think um, as I mentioned early on that the, the uh, primary aim for gender equality is to create a sustainable and peaceful uh, development. And probably um, we are one of the only uh, companies that have um, uh, more uh, female uh, involvement in the managerial and above. And we have proven that through this uh, COVID um, uh, situation, we managed to survive a better probably because of the sensitivity of the females, which is sometimes becomes a bad thing because it becomes too sensitive for um, many of us. But um, also this uh, COVID uh, and also the advancement of technology um, uh, allow us to a uh, new way of work which helps a woman to be more uh, flexible in the uh, office that they don't need to be present like nine to five. And um, now um, we in the office before, we never think of working in shift, but now with the COVID thing, because we have to keep uh, social distancing, we divide the office hour by shift. And um, that allows um, uh, women to be more flexible in um, their uh, working hour. Thank you. Well, look, I, you know, that's fantastic. I think it's a great way to end. It's another very practical thing that's absolutely of the moment because of COVID. I can't thank all of you on my panel enough. You've all been great panelists with, you know, lots of input. And I hope that everyone listening has enjoyed it. I know I have. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Thank, thank you, Alejandra. And Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Anne and panelists. I would like to remind you all that registration is open now until June 30 for the second round of Target Gender Equality Program. Companies from around the world are invited to register their interest in setting and reaching ambitious corporate targets for women's representation and leadership. The link to join in is in the chat on your right side hand. Um, finally, to round out this session, I'm pleased to turn now to video remarks from Jamila Jamil, a strong advocate and activist for gender equality in business and culture, as she answers your questions about gender equality, social media, and the steps businesses can play to advocate for equality. Let's hear from her now. All equality means a lot to me, but when it comes to gender equality, it's not only because it's the right thing to do, but also because it is the practical solution to a lot of the world's problems. We would live in a better society if we were to give empowerment and equality to one half of the world. There are some countries in which women still aren't allowed to work and their economy suffer, the mental health and physical health of the men in those countries suffer because they have to take on the entire burden of building that country and its economy. Allow the women in, allow them to help share the workload and, and allow them to have that autonomy and self-respect that would only make for happier people, which means that you have children being raised by happier and more empowered women, which makes for a better and healthier and wholer society. Um, I've cared about this for such a long time. I think when it became very obvious to me that there was a disparity in how 
I am treated versus men was probably entering the entertainment industry. That's when it became very explicit. My male co-stars were paid more and they were treated differently and they were given more exciting and intellectually stimulating things to do than I was. I was spoken to in a sexually degrading way as if it was funny and expect to just tolerate that and be a good sport about it. And so I think this industry really put a magnifying glass on, on how differently men and women are perceived, not just by men, but also by women. And so I've spent almost all of my time in this business, which is almost 13 years now, trying to fight for the equality of the genders. iWay is a social movement against shame. We are an allyship platform where we want to introduce you to the most exciting and interesting up and coming voices in activism who will, via teaching me, also teach you how you can better support different people from different communities or maybe even your own community. This is a time where all of us realise that we aren't really doing enough to help others, but a lot of us don't know where to start and so what I weigh strives to be is that starting point where wherever you're at in your knowledge, that's okay. We're not gonna shame you for what you don't know. We're just so excited that you want to learn. We talk a lot about mental health, about race, about trans issues, about sexuality, about disability. It is a radically inclusive space. It is a safe space on the internet that is full of love and education and empathy. And, and we now have a podcast, a YouTube channel and a social media platform that, that has amassed 1.3 million followers, all of whom are very engaged and they're very dedicated to actual tangible change and solution. I would say social media both helps and hinders the journey to gender equality, but I would say overwhelmingly it does help because without social media, the word of Me Too and Time's Up would never have gotten out. We wouldn't know what's happening to women in other countries far away, the kind of countries that aren't going to be covered on mainstream news in the United Kingdom or in the US. We are being able to understand what women worldwide are going through and that doesn't just help us help them, it also helps us understand that we are part of a pattern, that all the ways in which we're treated have a similar vein, there's a similar template to our oppression. And so I think most of the movements that have risen to prominence in the last couple of years could never have done so without social media. I think ways in which it's bad is that we are also able to be subjected to trolling and people who harass us and also corporations in the name of capitalism prey on our insecurities or attempt to distract or undermine us. But I think that women are intelligent enough that if we are just armed with the information to understand what it is that we're seeing and how prevalent and insidious it is, that we can come together and resist and then persist together. And so we saw that with Time's Up so many women around the world recognizing they had a shared experience, that their unique individual experiences were not so individual at all, they were a cliche. And I think in doing so, we were able to confirm that this was a, a crisis, a global crisis, a historical crisis that needed to be resolved and not turned away from once and for all. And I think that that stands for all uh, conversations regarding gender equality. It's all about who you hire. Make sure that your boardroom at the top is not filled with one type of person from one type of gender and they look the same and they're the same age. It's not going to help. The world is diverse and if you have a diverse boardroom and you have different people from different backgrounds and experiences and genders uh, making the big decisions in your company, then you are going to better serve and relate to your audience and it's good for business. We have seen so much success when people are willing to open their doors and diversify the people inside their companies, but not just at the bottom, at the top.
In the next 12 months, the ways in which I plan to contribute to gender equality is via iWay and all of the work that we are doing to try and educate people, to empower people, to bring to light incredible voices who can educate all of us on, on the issues at hand. And I will just continue to use my platform to platform others, but also speak my truth about all of the things that I have learned, that I have seen, that I think are unjust. I'm just not gonna shut up about it until we don't need to talk about it anymore, until we don't need an International Women's Day or a Women's Month, when every day feels like it is a day where we are respected and safe and appreciated. Thank you, Jamila. Wow, what an exciting day so far. Um, well, it's time now for our next set of breakout sessions. Remember, you can explore the action dialogues, Equality Labs, Content Studios, and Mentorship Lounge. The sessions there are amazing. Um, so there is so much to explore over the next hour and a half. Join us and uh, just take the, the full uh, agenda of session and see how it's listed on the Hopping homepage. So see you right back here soon. Enjoy. <laughs>